and I'm here today to talk to you about uh, communications and emergencies and communications in general. Uh, you know, as a world, we basically rely on cell phones now. Everyone has cell phones. Most of them are smartphones, which are great. Um, you know, but in a time of need, uh, they probably won't be working at all. 9/11. Um, most cell phone signals did not get through. They overloaded the system when you have an emergency and, and uh, cellular towers couldn't keep up with it. Think about the, how much has changed in cellular technology since then. Sure, we've had upgrades in bandwidth, but we've also had a lot of upgrades in the amount of usage that goes through cell signals. So now instead of just talking, we're texting and we're also using a lot of data. Any major metropolitan area or even some rural metropolitan areas uh, are going to be overwhelmed in the event of a full-scale crisis and I uh, firmly believe that cell phone reception or usage will be spotty at best. Uh, so what other ways can we communicate with our loved ones or with our friends? Uh, well, you have CB radio, you have ham radio, and, uh, and then you have some more exotic things like smoke signals. Today we're going to be focusing mostly on CB radios. Ham radios are great too. Ham radios require a license. Um, with that license, um, you're issued an ID and you use that in every communication you make. Um, after going through the licensing process, your ability to buy equipment uh, that can reach all the way across the world is, uh, is, is there for you to, at your disposal, which is great. I mean, it's great. Um, I've had ham radios. I am a ham radio operator. I recently sold 99% of my equipment. Um, I just really didn't find myself using it much. What I do have is a bunch of uh, moderately to extremely inexpensive CB radios that I've used for my family and friends. Um, eBay is the place to go. No need to buy a brand new CB radio these days. Uh, you can get a nice unit like I have right here which is set up as my base station. Um, you can buy base stations and plug directly into the outlet at 120 volts. This is a mobile that is plugged into a power transformer I'll show you up here. And these together were less than 60 bucks. Um, the only reason I paid that much for it is this radio also works on what's called single sideband mode. And I'll get into that more later on, but it offers some advantages over the regular 40 channel or 23 channel CB setups. So, you don't know anything about radio communications? Let's get into it right now. CB radio was hugely popular in the 70s and became even more so in the early 80s before tapering out, only to have a major uh, uptick again in the 90s and all the way through about 97, 98, and then it really started to die off as uh, cell phones became more popular. And, uh, and now it's pretty much for the hardcore fan or someone like you and me who is just keeping it as a backup form of communication. Uh, you don't need a license to operate it. You can find them very, very inexpensively on eBay. Uh, a handheld model like, uh, like this one here. Uh, this is a Radio Shack 40 channel full power CB radio. Um, maybe $7.99, new in the box. I mean, they, they go for pennies on the dollar, um, which is great. Uh, a mobile unit for your car, or if we're looking at just a straight 40 channel model, you know, 15 bucks, maybe 25 bucks if you want a really fancy one. Uh, and uh, for a unit for your house, if you're looking at a plug-in base station, you know, you're looking at maybe $75 for a good one with sideband. If you're looking at a mobile one with sideband, 60 bucks, you know, and another 10 for a power adapter, or you can run it off a battery, which is nice too. So uh, that's what we've got. Um, first, let me talk about, um, you know, base stations. Uh, base stations were huge back in the day. Uh, you were somebody if you had a base station. Um, and I'm talking about the 70s and, and again in the early 90s for the hardcore crowd that was following it. Um, a base station is what it sounds like. It's, it's something in your house. You can have it in your home or in your garage. I'm out in my tool shed here and I've got mine hooked up out here. It's a 40 channel. Gets all of them legal channels. Uh, and then it also gets what's called single sideband, which is uh, where they force the 4 watt amount of power into half of the signal, half of the frequency. So you're pumping more energy into it um, and it gets up instead of 4 watts, you're talking 12 watts. And uh, you can reach incredibly long distances with single sideband mode. Um, without skip, which I'll get into later, skip is when a signal bounces off the atmosphere and comes back down at a different angle. 
think of this basically. Uh, a regular line of sight signal is a signal that, that most people are going to communicate with in a time of emergency. That signal is limited to if you're talking about a handheld to handheld, maybe two to three miles, um, a mobile which is in your car to another mobile in another car, five to ten miles, and a base station with a good uh, roof mounted antenna, you're talking 20 to 25 miles, depending on your terrain. I'm in a mountainous region, so uh, depending on the, the location of who I'm trying to contact or who's trying to contact me, those numbers can change greatly. Um, and the numbers change when you're going from trying to contact somebody at a base station from a mobile or a handheld. You know, there's just no exact science to it, um, but you can have pretty good luck with a little bit of trying. So what we're going to do here is uh, I'll turn this sucker on and, uh, and, and you can hear we'll pick up some transmissions, uh, not locally because it's probably dead. There's really hardly anyone that uses a CB radios, even in major metropolitan areas. You know, truck drivers, and I'm nowhere near a highway. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. But on sideband uh, with skip, which again is where a signal bounces up, hits the atmosphere, and bounces back down, I could pick up a signal in the morning from uh, England, and I could pick up one from Mexico at lunchtime, and I could pick up one from Arizona, you know, in the afternoon, and in the evenings I could pick up one in Canada. It all has to do with atmospheric conditions, and that is important for you to remember that there's no guarantee. You could talk to somebody three days in a row in Canada at five o'clock at night and on the fourth day you'll be here in Mexico. I, you know, that's just the way it works. Uh, line of sight is, is a different situation. So let me go ahead and uh, set the camera up a little closer and I'll show you some of the features of a base station model uh, CB and then we'll move on to some mobile stuff and, and uh, we'll see if we can hear anyone. This is a unit in Grant which is the mobile version um, this is actually one of the last models they made, a unit in Grant LT. The LT stands for the fact that it has backlighting on all the dials, so in your car you can see the switches and stuff better at night. Um, and it was really kind of nice. So basically, my radio is stock. You'll hear people talk about um, getting radios peaked and tuned. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and it, and it can definitely help if somebody knows what they're doing. You can get you know, maybe 7 or 8 watts out of AM and maybe up to 20 watts out of uh, sideband mode. And in the real world, that doesn't really equal a whole lot more power output, a whole lot more range, but every little bit helps if you're trying to cut through the static. So, you know, I'm not knocking it and I'm, you know, I'm not recommending it. It's just, it's up to you. So anyway, your CB radio includes a voltage of doodads. This particular one has your volume and your squelch. Squelch is, is basically, uh, right now, you don't hear any, any sound at all, no static coming out of it. It will break through that uh, when a signal higher than the level of squelch you've applied comes through. So if I have somebody two miles down the road that wants to talk to me, and I'm not trying to listen to anybody ten miles down the road, I leave the squelch set at a fairly high position, and then when they want to get through to me, it'll pop through and it'll sound... You won't hear the static, but you will hear the person talking at the other end. That's basically what Squelch does. Um, this one has some of the fancier features. None of this stuff is absolutely necessary. You can get a very basic model that basically does the exact same thing. This one has RF gain. RF gain is uh, radio frequency. You know, again, in the 70s and 80s, there were a whole lot of people trying to talk on those 40 channels all at the same time. And if you were trying to talk to somebody in a car that was, you know, half a mile in front of you, you could use RF gain to drown out the other signals. By adjusting the RF gain knob, you basically are cutting out lesser signals. You're dropping the noise floor down so the signals that are 10 miles out disappear into the static as you cut the RF gain back. That's what that does. This particular model has mic gain. Uh, I have a power mic for this, but this is just the stock mic hooked up to it right now. You adjust this, uh, and basically if you're talking to somebody and your voice sounds um, distorted, kind of like uh, if you speak too closely into a microphone on a PA system, you can use the mic gain knob to turn that down until you have an acceptable uh, voice. Over here is where it gets different. In a single sideband mode, you have your regular AM switch, and then you also have upper sideband and lower sideband. These days, uh, for communicating across the world, most people use channels 35 through 39 on lower sideband. 
Um, you can use any channel you want. And if you're trying to have a private conversation with people in your group or family or friends, you want to use maybe another channel other than those. Uh, or you can use upper sideband. You can use any of it. But basically those, uh, those, those channels there are the ones that if you want to try to talk to somebody, it was called DXing or talking skip. Uh, that's, that's the channels you go to. And to be able to talk to people from all over the world. And most of them are, are fairly nice people. So uh, I'll turn this squelch down and we'll see if anybody's talking. Earlier today it was uh, tons of noise. Uh, recently I haven't heard much. Nope, nothing right now. And that's the way Skip works. Uh, the atmospheric condition changes and you know where your signal is bouncing down to is probably in the middle of the ocean somewhere. And there's nobody talking there so there's nothing to get back to you. Um, and also, on, uh, as far as skip and talking uh, long distance on sideband, uh, a guarantee is that you may be receiving a signal from uh, Canada and talking to a gentleman in Alberta, and then all of a sudden you can hear him just fine and, and, and he can no longer hear you. That's the way it works. I mean, sometimes the skip is uh, different. So you're getting a signal great from Alberta, Canada, and your signal is ending up in uh, western Washington. And, um, and that's just it. They hear you great, but they can't talk to you. And you hear somebody else great, but they can't hear you. So skip is just like it sounds. It's unreliable, but it's pretty cool. But anyway, uh, also on this one, you have a calibration uh, knob on there. And basically, uh, you don't need to use that very often. The calibration knob on these things is, is when you first set your uh, CB antenna up, whether it's mobile or base, uh, you want to make sure that it's set right. Um, if it's out of calibration, you can cause the transmitter portion of your radio to overheat and eventually fail if you were talking long term. In an emergency, you can talk uh, short burst, you know, three seconds, and then let rest for a minute, and you'll be fine uh, talking on the radio. But if you're going to have a setup like this where it's permanently mounted, go ahead and calibrate your uh, antenna and your radio and get that signal ratio down as low as it, it can go and you'll be heard better and, uh, and you don't have to worry about overheating your finals. So that's pretty much it for the base station. There's also some other switches on this. This one has dynamic squelch control. I don't even know what really that does. I don't use it. Um, it has the lights dim and bright. If this was mounted in a car and you're driving at night, you probably want it on dim so it didn't blind you. Um, this high and low, that's a tone switch. A lot of radios don't have these switches, but I'll go through them real quick. Another uh, neat function of this radio and some of the some of the CBs you still see out there. This one has a CB mode, which is regular. It also has a PA mode. On PA mode, there's an extra plug in the back. If you had it plugged in on the back, you could uh, hook it up to a bullhorn and have it mounted either wherever you wanted, in a car or at a function. And you could use the uh, microphone basically as a mobile bullhorn. So that's kind of neat. Um, and then you've got uh, noise blanker. Basically, it's, it's different strategies inside the uh, CB to cut down on background noise. I don't use those anymore. I don't know if people do. Again, there's not a lot of traffic on CB radios anymore, so you're not getting uh, a lot of background crap. You're just getting a lot of static, but it's, it's low, low noise static, so I just leave it be. And that's pretty much it. As far as powering the unit, um, let me go ahead and move the camera and I'll show you what powers this. Again, very inexpensive setup. Okay, so this is this is what powers the mobile unit. Again, you can buy a base station that has uh, one of these converters built in. But if you want to use uh, an inexpensive uh, mobile CB radio uh, in your house, this is probably the way to go. Um, you plug it into the wall and it turns 120 volts into, um, this one regulates at about 13.8, which is fine. Anything above 12, you're looking good. This particular one is a 3 amp. Unless you're running an amplifier, which you know is really not needed these days, um, that's plenty of power. You can get one cheaper than this. I think it's 1.75 amps. I used it for a while. Again, I didn't have any problems. Um, but these are very inexpensive. You're looking at maybe new. I don't know, twenty dollars. And certainly on eBay used, you can get them for you know ten to fifteen. Um, this one's kind of neat. It has the wire plug-in, which I'm using for my radio, but it also has a 12-volt outlet, just cigarette lighter outlet, um, which I'll plug into to show you how the uh, mobile handheld unit I have works. So that's, that's cool. That's really neat. That's all you need, that, some wire, and an antenna, 
and uh, I'll show you the antenna outside here in a bit and you're good to go. You can talk to the world. Alright, so let me plug in the, the, uh, the handheld and we'll talk about how the handhelds are. This is a handheld unit, um, telescoping antenna. Uh, and it goes up. I mean, it goes up to, I think, six or seven feet, which is good. As far as range goes, uh, you know, if you're talking in the woods a couple hundred feet apart, you can operate it like this. Again, they say not to operate it long term because you can overheat the finals. You're changing the signal ratio when you have an antenna halfway up. But for short term, you know, if you're just saying, hey man, there's a bear right behind you, no big deal. So this little booger uh, cost $7.99, including free shipping, and it was new in the box when I bought it, and it works just fine. Uh, the antenna goes up, like I said, to six feet. You can also uh, buy a rubber ducky antenna that clamps onto that. Um, it is a 40 channel. It doesn't have a, a gauge that shows you. It has dial up on top, and there's a neat little light here that you push a button and it lights up in the dark to tell you what channel you're on, which I think is pretty nifty. Um, Things to look for if you're going to get a handheld, because you can use this as a base station and you can use this in your car as well if you buy the right model. This one has all the things you would need to do that, and I'm going to zoom up here and show you. Um, you got a couple of plugins here. Uh, you got a power plug-in, which is what I was just operating on the, uh, the converter there. You've also got an external charging uh, port, which if you buy a charger for it and some rechargeable batteries, you can keep this thing going indefinitely. But this is the one that's important, external antenna. I can take this and plug it into the thing there uh, that, and, and have it working through an 18-foot antenna. And this thing will sound and work just as good as any $60 model. It just doesn't have sideband, but that's okay. For regular communications, you're talking two to three miles uh, on this antenna and probably up to 10 miles on the big antenna on the roof. This is the way to go. Um, this does not have as many buttons and doodads. It has just what you need. It's got a volume control button and uh, that self-explanatory and your squelch which we talked about on the other radio um, basically you can hear static through this thing with the squelch turned off if you've got a relatively close signal you want to listen to turn your squelch up until the static disappears and you'll be hearing only the person that comes through on it the other feature this has that i can't imagine why it would need is a transmitting power uh, on the top there it has the option of a high and low power output I would recommend leaving it on high. Uh, I, I mean, it's yeah. So basically, that's it. You've got uh, you've got your radio. I've got it plugged back in, so we can we can do a test to see how it sounds. You can hear it coming through. Hello, hello, hello. Right, that's working fine. Pick up your mobile here. Hello, hello. Oh boy. As far as installations go. The number one thing that's going to get you the best results with a CB radio is the bigger the antenna, the better the range. There's no way around that. You can get a stealth antenna, you can get a short antenna, you can get one of the 18 inch antennas, back a set unit, but the best thing you're going to get is if you've got a base station, get yourself a big old whip. And that's an 18 footer. That's what I've got mounted to the back of this building and it works great. For the cars, it's an ugly eyesore, works fine on a truck, looks definitely out of place on a car. I've got a nine foot whip, steel whip, you can still get them at Radio Shack for like 24 bucks brand new. That and some wire and you're hooked up and ready to go. Um, so that's about it dude, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video uh, and uh, we'll go outside and take a quick look at the car one and, and that's, that's it. Alright so for my truck, uh, this is the setup I've got. It's uh, just drilled into the steel bumper there, got a nice spring coil. I think that coil cost me about five dollars and that's just so when you take off and slam on your brakes it allows that whip to run around without putting too much tension on it but it's a nine foot steel whip it's probably kind of hard to see it in the sunlight here but uh, i don't think i bought it new but they're probably a little hard to come by nowadays and it works great as far as inside the car this is my little setup here uh, any car that has a double din uh, dash you know that's where the factory radio uh, took up both spots this fits in there perfectly. It's kind of a cool mod. That way you don't have to have the radio sitting someplace weird. But uh, you put your regular radio up top. Then down here I've got a, a Cobra uh, CB. And it's it's neat. This one's got some features on it. This is one of the later models. Uh, again, I picked it up on eBay. I don't think I paid but $12 or $13 for it. Um, but it's got some functions that are really helpful in the car, to be honest with you. It has 
uh, weather mode. So it goes through. If you can click on that, it's got it goes scans through the uh, weather stations out there, and it picks up the nearest one to you, and you can hear the weather at any time you want to. It also has uh, a scan mode, which is really neat. I wish the base stations would have that. That scan mode basically you set your squelch up, you know, till they're not hearing any static, and then you go through the scan, and, and it just scans through all 40 channels until it finds one that has somebody talking on it, and then you can choose to join that conversation or listen in. Again, uh, this is the dual watch switch, and that allows you to monitor two stations. So you can set your squelch up and maybe pick channel 35 and channel 9 or something like that, or channel 19, and it scans between the two, listening for uh, traffic. There's so little talk going on on these CBs nowadays. I just put it on scan mode, and and sometimes I'll make it 30 miles and never hear a peep, and uh, then you'll scare the crap out of yourself when somebody finally does speak. <laughs> anyway, that's it. I'm going to show you the base station, and uh, we'll move on from there. I'll talk to you a little bit about why you would need a CB radio. That's my base station antenna. It's a Antron A99, which I did buy new back in the 90s. I think I paid about 50 bucks for it. I don't know if they're still available new, but I'm sure there's plenty of them out there. You know, driving around the country, and if you see one sticking out top of somebody's house, there's no harm in dropping a note in their mailbox. Um, this this bottom part here, uh, that is not part of the antenna. That's uh, actually a TV antenna that I've got uh, for out in the garage. But that antenna there, that's 18 feet long. Once you get it mounted on there properly, uh, you are golden, man. And so that's what I've done there. Make sure you ground the hell out of that thing or you will be installing a very nice lightning rod. So that's it. The higher the better.